Hello, uh, YouTube, and welcome to uh, Double Whammy this week of week four and five of my fat loss phase. I got all the edits back last week for my weightlifting book, which is out this December, December 2019, and I'm super excited about it, um, but obviously it was quite an onslaught because there's a beginner's plan, an intermediate plan, an advanced plan, endurance plan, a hypertrophy plan, a strength training plan, and then a fat loss section, a muscle building section, cardio sections, uh, diet sections, like the whole thing. So last week it was just kind of a write-off for me. I just had to kind of bed in and settle down and do the edits. Um, so I wanted to take you through now weeks uh, four and five of the fat loss phase. This is a very weird setting. I'm in Berlin. I'm in a hotel room. Um, I would just wait until I'm back, but I don't know if I'm going to have time, if I'm going to have more book edits to do on Friday. So I figure I have an hour to kill now. I may as well do it now. Um, so yeah, welcome to my Berlin hotel room. Actually, this is a, a very private hotel where you're not really allowed to film, but I highly doubt any of them are watching my YouTube. And if you are, guys, I'm sorry, but you know, you just... Just got to get work done when you can. Um, okay, so let's talk through uh, the last video. So in the last video, it was the start of week three, and I was consistently had been hitting uh, one between one three seven and one three nine, um, but predominantly one three nine lbs, kind of day in day out, with you know an odd exception, but I averaged that at one three nine. So. Um, in week three, I started at 139. I was doing 35 minutes of cardio a day, six days a week, all steady state cardio, no hit yet. Hit is something that I'm going to wait um, as long as I can to throw in um, to kind of give my um, metabolic rate kind of a, a boost um, because of the epoch effect. It's a really good thing to throw in when you're stalling, which happens in a fat loss phase when your calories get low and you, you drop body fat and your cardio gets high. Uh, you can have hormonal and metabolic adaptations and you need some kind of tools in the bag to help uh, kind of give those a little push, a little spike. Um, and HIIT training is, is one of the tools that I'm waiting to use and haven't implemented yet. So right now I'm doing all low to moderate intensity steady state. Usually on the Stairmaster, I've started throwing in um, some sessions on the um, cross trainer, the elliptical, if you're American. Um, and that's just because, as I keep saying, you know, your body is adaptive. It will adapt to what kind of cardio you're doing. It learns, you know, muscle memory, uh, the mechanisms of what you're doing, um, which is great, but it also means that uh, your calorie expenditure, unbeknownst to you, um, is going to take a little bit of a hit. It's really negligible, but, you know, if you can switch it up and throw in different things, then... You always should, um, no matter what your goal is, you know, that, that kind of applies to everything. So, so I started doing a little bit of cross trainer. Um, I was on uh, 1,790 calories in week three, um, which was 140 grams of protein, which I will never touch, um, 70 grams of uh, fat, and 150 grams of carbohydrates. Um, so I was on 1,790 calories. And I also mentioned in that video that I typically, historically, will start to see my body moving um, really on the scale and uh, in my reflection, um, usually when I start to hit that kind of 1,500 calorie mark. So I like to ease in because, as I said, you know, I've been doing this for so long now, um, the fat loss phases and the muscle building that uh, your body does adapt. It really, really does. And it changes. And uh, your metabolic rate changes. And your, your lean body mass changes. You know, I've got a lot more muscle on me now than I had five years ago. I've been doing this for seven years now. Um, and, but at the same time, I have uh, got, had so many quite, you know, extreme fat loss phases because of what I do and all the fitness modeling that, you know, my kind of... <laughs> my metabolic rate, my, my basal metabolic rate, where my body want, needs to be, has probably had some adaptations too. So these days, instead of doing what I used to do, which is just knowing what my numbers are, that I get good results at in terms of diet and cardio, and, and if I need, you know, to do a little push, you know, in the last two or three weeks, you know, I'll, I'll change it a little bit and I'll see great results. My body's not like that anymore. 
Um, so instead what I do now is I try and ease in slowly and gently and just feel out my body, see where it's responding. It's always a bit of a murky area. Seven years of diet and training is, um, yeah, it's, it's going to change. It's going to change your, um, your kind of set points and, and where your body responds and what you weigh. And it's just, it's just, so I just basically try and be a little bit more progressive. Um, so, right. So then... I'll talk you through what happened in week three. In week three, I basically started, I think the first, let me think, the first two days, I was like at 139, 139. And then, or maybe it was just the first one day. And then for the rest of the week, I started hitting consistently 137 pounds, which I said in week three, that's where I wanted to go because I'd had that number a couple of times. So I knew that it was probable that that was the next kind of port of call for my weigh-ins um and I was right so I started consistently hitting 137 pounds as I've also said of course there are decimals here you know sometimes I'll be 137.5 and sometimes I'll be 137.2 and I um I, if I was doing it in kgs I would count those decimals but um in terms of lbs I, as I've said you know it's um the weighing cells are already really temperamental as it is. And um, I just kind of go on an average. If I'm, you know, on the higher end of 137, say like 0.8, then I'd probably round it up to 138. If I'm on the lower end, I'll round it down to 137. And if I'm jumping around, I'll just take an average. So uh, throughout week three, I started consistently weighing in at 137 pounds on average. Uh, so for week four, I didn't change anything because I was like, oh good, I'm moving. I've come down from 139 and I'm consistent on 137. Now, the start of week five, um, again, I was, so I started week, at week five at 137. Um, nothing changed at all. So this is what I did. I left my cardio the same for now, 35 minutes a day, six days a week, all steady state, a mixture of machines. Um, but I decreased my calories again. So I went from 150 grams of carbs down to 130 grams of carbs. So I took away 20 grams of carbohydrates, which is 80 calories. I wanted to bring down my fats as well, just a little, because I'm slowly going to bring them down now uh, consecutively. Um, not consecutively, like that's definitely the wrong word, in tandem. What was I trying to say? Why did I get to consecutive? Oh, whatever, anyway. So I brought down my fats as well to try and keep it in tandem um, from 70 grams of fats uh, down to 65 grams of, cat, uh, of fats, which is, <laughs> can't talk, of cats. I mean, which is uh, minus five grams of fat, which is uh, 45 calories. So in total, I took away 125 calories via carbohydrates and fats, which took me from 1,790 calories in week four uh, and week three to 1,665 calories uh, in week five. So that is where I am at. Um, I am going to do another update uh, next week. And basically, if I don't start to see like a 136 consistently, um, then I'm going to change something else. I just don't know what I'm going to change yet. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at now. Um, I guess in terms of, of carbohydrates, the, the lowest that I'm willing to take it initially, and this might change, but initially... Um, I'm happy to go down to 100 before I kind of cap it for a bit. Um, and that is because I eat five times a day. So that is giving me an average of like 20 grams of carbohydrates per meal. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Um, and that's a really nice number for me because it means that I can have carbohydrates in every meal, whether I'm having like a mega veggie salad, you know, vegetable fiber blowout, 
or if I want something that's a little bit more uh, fast digesting, um, like a bowl of cereal or whatever, it allots for that as well. So 100 grams of carbs for me is pretty much uh, where I'll probably leave it for, for a while, not necessarily for the entirety of it, but I want to get there. Um, and in terms of fats, to be honest, I usually will cap it at about 40 grams. Again, for a while, I've never gone lower than, what's the lowest I've gone with fats? I think the lowest I ever went with fats is about 30, 35 grams. Um, it gets really hard when you take your fats too low if you have a high number of pro a high protein amount, which I do. Um, but also with carbs as well, and, and generally like just eating out, you know, it can get really hard. So I try and keep it around about that 40 mark. Um, but as I said, I'm currently on uh, 1,665 calories and I don't really tend to see results until I hit that 1,500 number. Um, I'm away right now, which is really interesting. I'm really good because I've been tracking for, oh God, probably, let me think, five and a half years. No, so certainly not the entirety of my journey. Um, but I've been tracking for like five and a half years, so I'm quite good at looking at a plate of food and knowing how much uh, that piece of fish weighs, how much that bowl of broccoli w would amount to be. Um, oh, I can see a bit of oil over there, or oh, that looks like butter. How much would um, typically be used? Although that's always a bit of a guess. Well, it's a real guess, but you know. <laughs> You kind of, if you see it, you know, you, you can kind of imagine what they're doing. Um, so I'm quite good at eating out and being away. And actually, I tend to find that a lot of the time I lose weight when I'm away because I'm really active. Like today, I trained, I did my, my standard training in the hotel gym. And then I was walking around Berlin for an hour, like just exploring. And, and so, you know, that is neat. Um, it's non-exercise activity, thermogenesis. Um, it's, it's on the more kind of exercise spectrum of neat because obviously I'm walking. Like I'm, you know, taking myself out uh, for a little explore. And I'm not a dawdler. I don't dawdle. Obviously, I'm completely insane and hugely impatient. So when I walk, I'm like militant. I walk. So um, typically, you know, I also, because you're eating out a lot and you have to be really cautious if you're on a diet, it's totally doable. You can eat out on a diet with great success, but you cannot be like laissez-faire about it. You've got to be really kind of cautious. Um, and it kind of forces me to go back to basics. So I had... Um, for lunch today, I had just a completely plain uh, green salad. I love vegetables. Those of you who've listened to my podcast, I do an episode with Phil Lani, and he's like, let's be honest, we all hate vegetables. I'm like, uh, I don't. <laughs> I love veg. Um, so I had just like a plain salad um, as my start. Um, and then, because, you know, I'm in Berlin, and I want to feel like I'm in Berlin, I had um, schnitzel. Um, but because obviously schnitzel is going to be like bread crumbed and fried, so you know you gotta you gotta allow for that. Um, I just had like a side of um, roasted aubergine. Oh my god, aubergine! How did I not even know about aubergine until like two years ago? And it's just changed my life. Like it's the best vegetable in the world. Like there is nothing you can't do to this vegetable that doesn't make it taste like the best thing in the world. Like I would go vegan just so I had an excuse to eat aubergine for every meal. Vegans are not going to like that comment. I'm sorry. I, I generally just get a lot of attacking from, from that, that side of the dieting community. But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm quite impressed. I'm quite impressed with you guys. I think as someone who diets, it is a commitment and it is, um, it's a very moral and ethical commitment and I applaud you. But I'm sorry that I always just, I just, I put up recipes and people get really upset if there's an animal in it. And I'm like, I eat meat. I like meat. Um, anyway, I'm rambling. So I'm going to go. Um, but yeah, uh, essentially what I'm saying is, is that that movement um, is really great. And uh, going back to basics um, and being really cautious. with what you're eating and what you're ordering and the amounts and stuff I usually do see a drop so I'm hoping that through this week by the start of next week I will be 136 
we'll see. Um, I think my last, when I, when I used to get into photo shoot shape, I would usually hit about 125 pounds at my lowest, like right the day of shoot day, which I obviously try and orchestrate. So I'm at my lowest that day. And I'll talk about that closer to the time. Um, it gradually crept up. And now I think the lowest I get to is like 129. So that's kind of my basement way in. Um, and the reason why it crept up is because I have more muscle now. It's that simple. I'm bigger. I have more lean body mass, which is why I said now I don't just jump into a diet like I used to. Now I progressively go into it because my body is different. And I, I don't know it, you know, so assuredly as I used to, I have to be a little bit more trepidatious with it. Um, so last time I think it was 128, 129, somewhere around there. I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to be this time. I literally can't tell you. So I guess I will keep you posted and we will see. And at some point as well, I'm going to have to take um, progress pictures. But I just haven't really seen enough of a result on the scales or in person to do that yet. Um, I'm not bashing my own body at all. I love my body. I love it when I'm curvy and when I got body fat and loads of muscle. And I love it when I'm tiny and I'm shredded and I, I'm not body bashing. I just, there's no point in taking a progress picture if I don't see any progress. <laughs> so, you know, context is everything. Um, all right, guys. So I hope that makes sense. And I will check in with you next week in week six. Okay, bye.